so we're here at Apple Valley. We've got this nice IS300 right here. And do you want to introduce yourself? My name is Dallas Hoffman. I've had this car for about like five, six years now. I mean, there's not much to it. Just a basic like suspension work, a motor swap, just a body kit, you know, just basic accessories on the exterior. Mainly just like motor, motor modifications. That's about it. What year is this? Uh, 2004. 04? Yeah, 2004. Did you buy it bone stock or? Yeah, completely stock. The car had about like 90,000 original miles. It's at like 130 right now. Did the swap around like 115,000 miles. Just kind of progressed from there. That's pretty low mileage for a 04. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to keep it low. Don't daily drive it. Just take it to the track, you know? Hell yeah. So what kind of body kit is it? Uh, BN Sports. Uh, it's a replica. Is all fiberglass the whole kit? Yeah, the whole kit, fiberglass, completely fiberglass. Um, is the spoiler even fiberglass? Yeah, the spoiler is fiberglass. It's a TRD, and then uh, the tail lights are uh, LED. So you said this uh, spoiler is a TRD spoiler? Yeah. Okay, and then the rest of the kit is uh, uh, BN Sports. Yeah, this kit is like really, really low. Yeah, it sits really low and aggressive. Uh, that's why. That's pretty much why I like it. No other kits really uh, are as aggressive as this one. This one's pretty much like the best, in my opinion, for drifting. Hell yeah! Still be able to like have a good ride height and yeah, sit yeah, most low. definitely. Uh, if you set your uh, suspension up pretty good and you know have a decent ride height, you don't really have to worry about breaking the kit too much. I mean, unless you know you're just starting out drifting, then probably worry about breaking it more because you're going off the track and whatnot but gotta worry about other stuff yeah <laughs> and with the clear tails did you buy those like off the shelf or yeah uh straight from japan um from the auctions uh brand new uh the centers and the the left and right outers okay. uh they're they're all leds on the outside and inside same with the inners all led outside and inside was it pretty pricey? Or like, did you have to wait a while for um, to ship over? They weren't like too pricey. They're they're pretty expensive compared to like OEM tails, but um, I didn't really have to wait that long. No, maybe like a two week two week wait time. And oh, that was it. Got them shipped good. to my house. Hell yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, they changed like the whole look of the rear end. The clear tails. Yeah, I like them a lot more, especially like the LED ones. Uh, changes the look a lot Hell yeah. is there anything else in the exterior exterior wise just got some ankies on the rear just some drift spares um, got some grenade gxo ones i run 215 45 17 so i run 17s all the way around i believe there's 17 plus 30 and then i have i'm running a 20 mil adapter so they're at plus, around like plus 10 right now. What kind of suspension are you running? Uh, I'm running BC coilovers with uh, Swiss springs, 28K spring rate in the front, 24K in the rear. Okay. And how about like your arms and knuckles and all that? Um, arms in the rear, I'm running eBay aftermarket upper control arms. You can't really see them at the moment. But uh, other than that, the only thing I have is uh, toe arms and they're completely Everything else is completely stocked besides toe arms and rear upper control arms. That's the only thing. I just got the rear upper control arm so I can max out the camber as much positive. So I could burn the tire evenly. I'm at about positive 0.6 in the rear right now and a negative six in the front. Do you do that for when the car squats? So you yeah. Know. Yeah, so when uh, the car squats, then it'll give a little negative camber so then it'll even out to about like zero or so and then you'll burn the whole tire perfectly even so you don't waste any tread have you had that alignment since you modified the car or? um no i just recently got an alignment uh like a week ago at uh, che works okay so hit them up if you need an alignment I, uh, they do a really good job oh yeah do you want to show off the angle on the front oh uh, yeah show that Don't get 
get as much angle when the car's off compared to like while you're moving. If you turn the wheel a little more, you'll you'll get a little more angle. But uh, I'm running a Easy Knuckles angle kit setup. It's kind of hard to see with the GS300 outer tie rods, and that's pretty much it. Were those bolt on? Those GS300? Yeah, direct bolt on. Uh, no modifications needed. They just uh, extend the the outer tie rod a little more so the inner can reach because when you have an angle kit you're gonna have more travel so you need that extra length in the in the outer tie rod hell yeah sweet do you want to show off the interior yeah um so the interior is pretty much stock besides a, a grid bucket um i got all other door cards because it's a 04 and then I got the the different cluster with the silver accents. Um, swapped to a 01 dash because uh, it's a 04, and anything over 01 usually comes with a sticky dash, so it ends up getting all messed up. So got went to the junkyard, got one of those, swapped it out. It was tan uh, on the bottom half, and then I just used some interior paint, painted it black. And then I didn't like how I had the 04 center, center console with the uh, with the 01 dash, so I went ahead and got the 01 center console to match the dash. So it has a, the other ones usually have like an armrest or something else right here, but then the 01 just has this little compartment right there, so nothing gets in the way of your elbow. Oh, yeah. What kind of hydro brake is that? Oh, and then uh, that's just like a cheap, just a cheap eBay uh, hydro e-brake I'm running, but then if you look at the rear, I'm running a Wilwood dual caliper setup with some FIGS engineering brackets. Yeah, the hydro looks pretty cool. I like how the reservoir is like right there behind it too. Yeah, so uh, I got this e-brake because I want a normal e-brake to keep the pressure off my transmission too. So what I, what I did was I got an e-brake where you a hydraulic e-brake where you could lock it into place and it could be used as a normal normal e-brake oh so, no way yeah so when you're just parked you could go ahead and lock it up and acts as a normal e-brake yeah i've seen dudes they just get like a piece of rope and like yeah they'll just tie it back yeah, yeah that's what i used to do but i got over that so i just i found a different hydro on uh, ebay it was like maybe 50 bucks or so and then went ahead and swapped it out just so I could have that feature because that's definitely something I like. Hell yeah, yeah it looks clean. I like that shift knob too. Yeah, I got a Gretty shift knob with the Brid boot and then uh, I went ahead and did my interior. I just wrapped it in some purple velvet and then did the side pillars all the way around as well as uh, paint all the little interior pieces black to match like a little accents here and there. Yeah, that fabric looks cool on the pillars. Yeah. And then uh, I just got all my stuff on switches right now, like my fan, this one's my fan, my oil cooler and my fuel. I used to have these ones hooked up to a horn and some other fans, but took those out. So I don't use those switches at the moment. And you said you did all this work yourself, right? Yeah. Hell yeah. Everything myself. Uh, I mean, the way I look at it is if you're going to go do all this drifting, you know, spend spend money, you want to know what's going on with your car. You want to be able to fix it yourself, you know, like learn things throughout, throughout trial and error and just go from there, you know? Probably a lot easier too, like as far as labor and stuff you don't oh yeah yeah all you have to do is pretty much just spend money and parts and then you don't have to pay anyone to diagnose things labor to replace parts on top of paying for parts all that stuff it comes in it comes in handy just oh, yeah. learning you know trial and error that's all it's about really oh yeah it's really impressive dude and you said you painted this yourself too right? yeah yeah Ooh. um just been learning like painting throughout throughout time you know just trial and error pretty much like i said before and just if you really want to do it yourself and you're dedicated you know you'll you'll do it you'll just stick to it and the more you try and fail and learn just keep going as long as you're dedicated you'll get it
It's the only way to do it. Yep. <laughs> if you want to come over to the engine bay. Uh, nothing really like too special done here. Just, just a little clean shave. Just took the ECU box out, relocated it uh, under my dash. Took all the heater core uh, stuff out. Went ahead and relocated the harness, just extended it a little. So I wrapped it up above the fender right here. You can see where it goes in and comes up and then it goes all the way around right back into here. So you didn't get the OEM harness, how it usually comes up over here. Um, yeah, that makes it a lot cleaner too. Yeah. Just re relocating the ECU, just did all that. Um, and then I took all the basic, like just left all the basic functions, took out all the complex stuff out, like all the sen other sensors that I didn't need. Just basic functions, windows, headlights, high beams, tail lights, stuff like that. You know, like I said, it's not really a daily driver, so don't need all those things. Um, got an upgraded coil rad competition uh, radiator and flow. That helps a lot. Do they have different versions for the same vehicle? Uh, they do. They have uh, the end flow, and then they just, which is a competition spec, and then they have the regular, just coil rad, not non end flow. So this is like the top of the line. Yeah, top of the line uh, competition spec radiator. Yeah, a lot of people run coil rad. So yeah, it seems to work really well. Yeah, it's a really good company. Uh, Mishimoto and Koyorad kind of compete, but I'd say Koyorad is a lot, a lot better company, you know, for what it is. Uh, don't get me wrong, Mishimoto is improving, but I'd recommend Koyorad over uh, Mishimoto. And then uh, I do have an inner or a oil cooler with the with the fan because Jay Z's are known for getting hot, uh, especially if you're on it 24/7. They they'll get really hot real fast. Just have a oil catch can right here set up. Nothing too complex. With uh, with a block off plate because uh, my fans are so strong that it blows too much air into my intake and it messes my AFRs up a little. So I had to make a block off plate to uh, block the airflow from the fans and direct it away from the intake. Dude, usually it's the other way around. You're yeah. trying to like get air into the engine bay. Like. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Are yeah. Those, what kind of fans did you say those were? Um, I'm running uh, OEM IS300 fans. Uh, OEM IS300 fans are probably probably one of the best uh, that I've seen so far. A lot of people run them. Never had any issues with them. Cools my car down really quick. And it's uh, a dual fan setup, right? Yeah, or? it's a dual fan setup. Okay. Sweet. And then I'm just running a mission. It's done me good for, for the time being. I mean, I've had no issues with it, so I don't see any need to upgrade at the moment. But maybe in the future, I could upgrade to a bigger intercooler because it is a small, a little small intercooler. So it could help with uh, with cooling if I had a bigger intercooler, but at the moment, I don't really need one. So how about your engine mounts? Were those custom or...? Uh, the engine mounts are excessive manufacturing. I have uh, all solid mounts, uh, everywhere, transmission mounts, motor mounts, all that good stuff. Um, resealed the whole motor when when I bought it, did the, the timing belt, water pump, front main seal, cam seals, rear main, all the intake manifold gaskets, turbo gaskets. So everything on this car is pretty much refreshed. Has had no oil leaks for about five years now. Uh, just upgraded some of the, the stop turbo, the feed, the oil feed line and the water feed line to some stainless steel ones. But other than that, pretty basic. Just got all my my uh, stuff chrome, my J-pipe, my, well, my J-pipe, my fucking intercooler piece, my water neck, everything. Sweet. And you said um, you had stock internals? Yeah, stock, completely stock everything, stock uh, ECU, stock internals. Nothing's upgraded internally, just all external stuff, just 
make it look nice. And how much power is it making? Uh, I've never got it dynoed, but I'd say maybe just a little over 300 horsepower. Not too much, but just enough. That probably feels way different than like an NA setup compared yeah. to like a turbo setup. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, NA setups, I mean, you can, you can use it if you know how to drive, but for sure turbo turbo setups you get more torque Probably and, a lot more fun too. yeah a lot more fun but just more headache <laughs> more issues to deal with yeah. especially if you're beginning you know that's pretty much it so who tuned this engine uh nobody tuned it uh because it's running all stock ecu stock everything so all i did was just wire up the ecu uh how it should be from factory and that's pretty much it. Okay. I've just been running it like that since. So this this one J came with a turbo from the factory. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it comes factory uh, with turbo and everything. Okay. Just single turbo. It's cool. Just keep it simple. And yeah. Reliable. Simple and reliable. Yep, exactly. Just uh, minor modifications. Try to get the car run a little better, but not much. The only major modifications I'd say I've done for the cooling is. Uh, this hose right here, uh, I run a block off plate on the back of my water pump. Uh, usually it cycles through the heater core and all that stuff if you run AC, but I don't run AC. So I went ahead and uh, tapped my block in the back, back here. And then I just run this coolant line straight from the back of the block back and it dumps to the radiate straight back to the radiator. So it gets the most cooling efficiency possible. Are you running a coolant or are you like distilled water? Uh, coolant, coolant? Uh, Toyota. Okay. Yeah. I make my own mixture. Uh, usually I'll run about 80% uh, water and 20% uh, Toyota coolant. You got any other plans with like upgrading the engine or anything? Or? Um, not at the moment, no. You're pretty satisfied? Yeah, I'm pretty satisfied how it drives. It's super reliable. All I, all I really do is just basic maintenance, oil changes, just check, check all my suspension parts, make sure they're tight. But that's about it. It's been reliable for the past four or five years. Now. Sweet. Do you want to start it up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe give it a few revs. <laughs> your maintenance up that's pretty much it oh. stay dedicated yes sir <laughs> what kind of exhaust is it um so my exhaust i'm running uh future fab down pipe to uh i think three inch all the way all the way back three inch and then i have one resonator and a vibrant muffler and then it, it the vibrant muffler goes to a four inch so three all the way to a four inch at the muffler right back here yeah, yeah. that thing sounds nasty man. yeah <laughs> sounds good yeah it sounds good i like it i like my exhaust setup oh yeah is there, is there anything else you want to show us or um any any more cool things about this car not that i could think of no it's pretty basic i mean just little things here and there but that's about it any of you guys have need any advice or like anything the only thing i'd have to say is just stay dedicated just keep trying everything's about trial and error just don't give up and just stay passionate and you'll you'll get there eventually some words of wisdom right there <laughs> oh, yeah, well thank you man yeah I no really problem appreciate bro. your time <laughs>